Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Land Rover Discovery Sport and by pressing this button you can actually turn on the headlights of this car and also open the boot from the remote. Anyway, straight away let's open the engine bay hydraulic struts. Yeah, it's got a nice wash today, but yes, the engine bay actually looks quite compact because it only uses four cylinder engines, maybe three also, but we'll talk about that when you're driving the car. There's insulation right there. This is actually functional. That's really nice. Wow, that's impressive. I never thought about that. But from where is it pulling the air? So when I put it down from the hood, yeah, actually it's pulling air somewhere from there. That's kind of interesting. That's a nice way to cool the car. Now you can see this is a facelift. So obviously it has got revision in terms of design, the bumpers, everything. Slight changes here and there and inspiration from the bigger Discovery 5 as well. So straight up front, let me tell you that they have used black treatment a lot on the lower half just to reduce the visual bulk. And you've got front parking sensors. There's the towing hook of the car and that is a very low fog lamp which doesn't look that effective as such. Okay, the lights are really bright. Here you see there are air damps which are actually functional. No fake stuff here and the traditional Land Rover grille with Land Rover written right there says Discovery boldly up front and I actually like the design but it is unmistakably a Discovery Sport. The lights have been updated. These are all LED units. It gets these dynamic swipe indicators. I don't remember what Land Rover actually calls it but they swipe from the inside to the outside and look really very nice. The lights are actually bright enough. They look really very good indeed and this car also gets this beautiful headlight washer. You see it comes out and it sprays to clean the headlight. That's also very nice indeed. So the lights are nice. The design up front will remind you of the bigger Discovery as well. But coming to the side, you will be a little disappointed because it looks very similar to the pre-facelift model. And the choice of wheel design isn't that impressive either. Kind of looks plain and basic. I mean, you're spending so much for a car, the alloy wheel design should definitely be better. 235, 60, 18s are the size of the tires. And you've got this body cladding running throughout the car as well says discovery here very subtly because it's kind of finished in red itself that's the body color and you've got black colored finish on the outside rear view mirrors along with the roof as well so contrast colors but you know what you see there's a projection happening from here no it does not project the land rover sign or any of that on the road it's just like a welcome light which isn't very bright at night now the biggest disappointment for me personally has been that there is no keyless entry you have to press a button to unlock the car you put your hand it doesn't unlock and when you unlock the car only the driver's head gets unlocked not all the doors, I think that is programmable on the inside. Coming to the rear of the car, firstly, they have put a Land Rover badging here, which they do it actually with almost all their cars. And uh, this is where the add blue fluid goes to make it comply with BS6 emission norms. Doesn't tell you the tire pressure ratings here. Coming to the rear, again, there are slight changes on this car. First and foremost, the lights are now revised. They look really nice, LED units. And I love the indicator which swipes from the inside to the outside, looks really fab. This is the towing hook of the car parking sensors of course sort of a skate plate and the bumper is finished in black to reduce the visual bulk of the car those are the fog lamps on the lower side and it says d180s because this is the diesel 180 is the horsepower s is the trim level and sport is the name of the car discovery sport land rover okay land rover discovery sport you read it like you're reading on a left hand drive car just kidding it gets a functional rear spoiler i say functional because i think it adds to the aerodynamics there's a stop lamp here as well. There's a shark fin antenna there. And I think this is the Discovery sort of a logo here too. So yes, looks really very nice. And here is of course the rear parking camera, which is a little dirty. And when you get into reverse and use a rear wiper, it also does a spray from here to clean the camera as well. That's very nice. Some of the Land Rover elements are super duper awesome. But this is actually a seven seater. I kid you not. This is a seven seater vehicle. Just press a button here. It's a power tailgate. It comes up without any issue whatsoever. Let me tell you straight away, this is a very flexible car because you can make it whatever seater you want. But firstly, let me show you the spare wheel, which is not an alloy, which is kind of surprising because Land Rover does not do that. However, in this car, they have. Firstly, let me show you that the boot is actually very small and there is a 12 volt charging socket here. There's a USB plug on this side and uh, here there are buttons to actually recline the seat. So if I press this button, you see the seat actually comes down 60 40 split. Technically, it's not 60-40. I think it should be 40-40-20. So, we'll try that as well. Yeah, press the button. There it goes down. And you can increase the boot carrying capacity as well. This is a parcel shelf. This is the air conditioning control for the last row. Yeah, you can use this to actually increase or decrease the air conditioning. Air conditioning is off right now. But 
this is the ac vent for the last row but where's the last row the last row is here so this is the last row of the car and uh, leg room and knee room isn't much in the last row however it is a makeshift seven seater they actually call it five plus two i kid you not they actually call this a five plus two and there you see <laughs> the headrests are kind of weird non-adjustable of course and the boot becomes really very small once you put the last row of seats up power tailgate press that button and there the tailgate reclines as well they've also given you a handle so if you want to do it manually be my guest let's just put the seats back into place here you are that's that okay there's a lot of stuff lying here and there pardon me for that we have been finding it really tough to shoot in these rains it's been raining continuously so the door pockets are really big in terms of size which is again a good thing and I like how they have done the stitching and the wood treatment as well on the door pads. Looks really nice and premium. You see, there is absolutely no space in the rear as such. For adults, of course. For children, yeah, probably yes. And they have given cup holders here. There are cup holders too. Just in case that you make the kids sit behind and they want to give them Bon Vita or Complan. Be my guest. But there is actually a good thing that you can increase the space in the last row. Because these seats can be moved ahead or behind. It just takes super duper effort. They're not the easiest. Sorry, I had to put the camera down. <laughs> They're not the easiest to push ahead or behind. Now there is some space at the rear. So yeah, you can obviously adjust that. The only thing is that there's a compromise which has to be made between the second and third row of passengers to see how much legroom who gets in this car. Okay, straight away, let me get inside. There's a hump here in the center and uh, this LV bag is occupying that. Nice bag, Neha. Where did you get it from? Don't say Chor Bazaar, I'm recording this right now. Anyways, there are multiple charging ports. So there's a USB here. There's another USB here. And here is a 12 volt charging socket. Rear AC vent placement. And of course, you can control the air conditioning from here as well. Scooped out seat back, magazine holders. And okay, there is another charging socket here, which I think you can get an optional. Wait a second, what is this? Yeah, you can actually attach a screen here. For that, they've already given all the equipment. That's really very cool amazing stuff okay you can adjust the headrest like this yeah that's right press this button you can adjust the headrest it's also very nicely done the roof is massive this glass roof panoramic roof but it does not open which is so freaking shocking it is a fixed roof why would you give a fixed roof it should at least open anyways there is a handle here with the hook of course and there's a light placement here as well and uh, there is some plastic sheet on that i don't know why it's not removed yet ah that's nice very satisfying as well Seats are actually very comfortable, but they're quite stiff. Some of the seats are super duper stiff. All the contouring is nice. Legroom and knee room is decent. Under thigh support isn't that great. And headroom is adequate, actually. It's very nice, the headroom on this car. I love how the power window controls are on the top side. So it's very comfortable to use. It gives you that swag thing when you're putting your hand up and driving the car. A multitude of airbags in this car, but no adjustable seat belt height, which is disappointing. There's a hook here for your coat, of course. And uh, three adjustable headrests at the rear in the second row that is of course you can move it up or down and there is a center armrest as well with twin cup holders and some storage space too so you can keep your vada powers or maybe even theplas and khakras here because it's not very deep as such that's what she said second row decently comfortable let's get to the front and uh, this being the s trim misses out on some features which are there on the higher r dynamic trim and some of the features which are available abroad are not available in india unfortunately so you can see the design is highly updated might remind you of more expensive range rovers now you see there's a lot of space in the front door pockets this is to lock or unlock the door but the co-passenger can actually lock the door cannot unlock the door you see that yeah cannot unlock the door but they can lock the door that's funny and these are the power window controls these are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors and this is for child lock when you do the child lock not only child locks the windows but it also child locks the rear doors which is quite nice so you don't have to do it manually anyways it gets a 12 way power adjustable driver seat and the seat is nice and comfortable like i told you earlier it's a little bit on the firm side nice dead pedal there and of course the brake pedal is bigger in terms of size this is to open the boot if you want to do it from inside and this is to adjust yeah i think the intensity of the instrument cluster or maybe the headlight leveler what do you think it could be because it's got automatic headlight leveling so i don't think that needs to be there this is the electronic parking brake and the position is very mercedes like anyways this steering wheel is of course adjustable both for reach as well as rake disappointingly though you know it is completely manual so it takes some effort to do that where is it where is it here it is yeah so manual adjustment is the problem at this price i expect them to offer at least electric adjust meanwhile this dashboard looks super duper awesome really well done well judged and of course very premium as well 
In fact, the way they have played with colors is super nice. You get this wood treatment, you get this nice soft touch material, beautiful stitching as well. And this material is also very different. Yeah, not really hard. So a beautifully well done job there by Land Rover. Big thumbs up from me. Let's open the glove box. So you see glove box is also decent size. And inside you have got a port for something which I am not able to figure out at the moment. Maybe it is to turn off the airbag of the co-passenger. Anyways, inside you have this velvet treatment which also feels very premium and nice. So here there is a 12 volt charging outlet and this is a wireless charger right inside as well. Plenty of storage spaces. In fact, below the front center armrest, there's good amount of storage space. There are two USB ports. There's one SD card as well as a 12 volt charging socket. This car has so many charging options and there's a dustbin here wherein you can actually keep your cups so twin cup holders with this rubber treatment so it just slots in perfectly but what if you want to remove the dustbin and clean it how do you remove the dustbin and clean now yes so you know what this thing actually comes out i'm not kidding press this button here the dustbin is out and look at this this is massive in terms of size really nice really big and really spacious as well you can just slot this back in there it just slots in perfectly yeah it's a nice big Yep, there it slots in and this is how it opens. This also you can remove. That's nice actually. Anyways, they had the rotary gear dial which is gone right now. So you've got a traditional gear lever instead. So there's the Land Rover badging, of course. Meanwhile, these buttons on the steering wheel feel really nice. These are the touch control buttons. Super duper awesome to use and they change their color according to the command. So if a phone call is coming, this will actually glow red and green and changing the position to very nice, very slick to use. These are the controls for the cruise control. These are the paddle shifters, a little bit plasticky. So that's something which they could have made metal as well because there is metal on the levers, which feel really nice to use. Now, this is, of course, the control for the wipers. The wipers work really well. A lot of spray on offer. You see six sprays coming from two nozzles on the windscreen and obviously you've got automatic wipers you've got automatic headlights and you've got a slew of technologies this is obviously the lever for the headlight control a little complex to use this is for the fog lamp as such and you obviously get rear wiper too which can be used very easily there it goes now the thing is it gets two speeds one is the intermittent and the other is the on switch unfortunately though the instrument cluster is not all digital it is part digital yeah, the higher model gets a full digital instrument cluster, which is kind of weird. I mean, they could have given a full digital cluster. It's not very convincing as such. I mean, it looks like a cost cutting method. They should have just not put the speedometer and the tachometer in the digital part. However, it still looks decent and nice and is quite visible and has plenty of information as well. So this is obviously the speedometer. This is the tachometer and here is the fuel meter. This is the engine temperature meter, odometer, tell till lights everywhere. So temperature, distance to empty, clock, gear position actually this is the digital speedometer this is a gear position indicator whether the stop start system is working and which mode you're driving in right now this in the center screen you have a lot of information in fact you want to browse through that press this button yeah this button right now it is on the lane keep assist and there is so much information in this multi-information display you get all the freaking information you need on earth and more it's absolutely crazy but here driver assistance system means steering assistance driving condition monitor which will tell you exactly if you're feeling sleepy and park notification also because it has got self park to press this button and then you can decide okay this says park out is ready just need to indicate so what we are going to do is we are going to turn off the hazard lights this is the hazard light switch of course we are going to give a right indicator just hold this once neha and we are going to try to reverse out from here rather drive out from here not reverse beech mein park kar di road ki usne So as you saw, self park is really nice, but it parked in the middle of the road, unfortunately. Anyways, this is a new infotainment system, which happens to be a 10 inch unit. It is really very nice and very slick and a big leap up from the earlier one. It also gives you eco data here. So if you press this button, you get eco data of how well you have been driving the car. It's kind of unnecessary, but still because everybody's getting so fuel efficiency oriented. It shows that as well. Browsing this is very nice and slick. It's got Apple CarPlay, it's got Android Auto connectivity. There's a browser mode. There's a valley mode as well. There's a live mode. What is a live mode? Who cares? Let's just get out of this. Now, I'll tell you the coolest feature about this car. In case you forget the size of the car, how will you remember or know what is the size of the car? No problem. They're given something known as vehicle dimensions right here. Pressing this will show you what is the dimension of the car without accessories. So it is 4.6 meters long and it is 2.17 meters wide and 1.72 meters 
tall in terms of height is always in terms of height in terms of tall okay whatever we are talking and uh, it's got something known as 4 by 4 i basically it helps you when you're going off road but who cares about that right now let's get into ambient lighting because ambient lighting is quite cool in this car you've got 10 colors for the ambient lighting and the colors are nice and very legible as well so not much in the infotainment system because it's a slick unit with plenty of information and this one gets i think a jaguar land rover system for the audio with i think six or seven speakers and 180 200 watt output i don't exactly remember but we'll still play an audio audio quality is very nice indeed good sound good insulation very nice navigation too looks slick as such and that's about it because this is not the top model so it misses out on a lot of features however you got an auto dimming inside rear view mirror unfortunately though you do not get the camera system here which is there on other trims and this is the light which is like a touch control meanwhile there is a sunglass holder here and there is a mirror here unfortunately you have to separately turn on the lights which kind of feels awkward and weird in a car this pricey same is the case here as well separate mirror and light controls Meanwhile, this is for the sun blind. So you can open the sun blind by pressing this button and there it opens. Now, in case you leave the sun blind open when you exit the car, when you lock it, it will automatically close the sun blind so that the sun does not come inside. So some smartness is there, of course, which is actually a good thing. Meanwhile, you see, this is finished in piano black, which is both a good and bad thing because piano black is a fingerprint magnet. And you know what? Where is the dial for the terrain response system? Well, they have actually done it very smartly here. So firstly, there's a physical control for the volume. Let's turn on the air conditioning. Now, I've turned on the air conditioning. What if I want to increase the blower speed? I press this button and this one changes for blower speed. Looks super duper nice, works flawlessly well too. But what if I want to change the driving modes? I press this button and there I can see the driving modes. There's Eco. There is obviously the normal drive mode, which is known as Comfort in Jaguar Land Rover speak. There is Auto Function too. This is for grass, gravel, snow. This one is of course for mud and ruts and the last one is for sand. So you just can browse through this beautifully well. They have actually reduced the buttons which is a good thing. The outside rear view mirrors get the heated function and the driver side also gets auto dimming function. I love the placement of the power window controls. It gives you a feeling of driving an SUV. Globally of course they have heads up display. They have a ton more features in the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Unfortunately all that and more isn't available in the Indian market. but who really cares because it's time to drive so let's get going right away but before we get going i forgot to show you the reverse parking camera so let's get into reverse and that is the reverse parking camera of this vehicle it gets guidelines which are obviously adaptive the camera could have been a little wider honestly but then for the 360 degree parking sensors they have the display on the left side of this car by the way the second row also reclines yeah that's right it also reclines so you can improve the recline angle if you so wish and if you want to go behind well you can just push it like this and there get in easily too if you want to put this headrest down you just pull this yeah that's right you just pull it and there the headrest goes down keep it pulled and then you can push it and fold this as well and there's storage space here too on both the sides of course 